Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Mauritius compliance stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first story is titled, They're Your Rules. I was an English teacher in Moscow. At the beginning of the school year, I asked for a week of time off around a holiday, so I could travel some. I got denied so the week it came around, I was pleased that most of my classes had been cancelled because the students had the same idea I had and were all going on vacation. I get an email from the administration stating that I was to cover classes for another teacher who was taking vacation for the week I had asked for. So I was already a bit upset about that they'd approved him, but not me, especially since I'd asked for it like five months ago. Anyway, I accept the hand that was dealt and start preparing lessons. The day of the first class, I leave home a few hours early so that I had plenty of time to make sure I could find the place, it was at a location I'd never been, and that I had all the necessary equipment I needed to read the lessons. It was pretty easy to find, but when I rang the bell, there was no answer. I had some time, so I went off to get a snack. I come back to the school about 30 minutes early and ring the bell again. No answer. I try calling the school's administrator. No answer. I try calling the administrator who assigned the classes. No answer. For over an hour I rang the doorbell and called multiple times to no avail. My contract stated that I had to wait 30 minutes for students to show up before I could leave. So at the 30 minute mark, I sent a text to all parties that read something along the lines of, I was here on time. I waited a half hour after the scheduled time, but nobody answered the door. I'm going back home. It will take me 20 minutes to get to the metro, if you call me before I board, I will turn around and come back. When I got home, I got a call. Where the hell are you? At home. You have a class. I'm aware. I was there and nobody answered the door. I called and nobody answered. I also left a text. Texting is not an approved form of communication. Now, this was before I had a phone with a data plan, so text was the only way I could message someone. They tried docking my pay for this, but when I told the owner what had happened and showed him my call logs and the text I left, he made sure that didn't happen. Fast forward a few months. I'd been having a lot of issues with the administration so I'd become an expert on the finer details of our contract. One of those details was that the administration couldn't assign a class with less than 72 hours notice. So when they called on Saturday, to give me a class for Monday, I told them no. Again, they tried to dock my pay. The owner sighed at me and told me I was right. My favorite part, though, was receiving a text that said I was to teach a class on a given day. They made special mention of the 72-hour rule. I ignored the text. When the time for class came around, I got another call. Where the hell are you? At home. You have a class. No, I don't. I sent you a text. I have it saved. Texting is not an approved form of communication. The next story is titled, It's my responsibility to ensure I fulfill my hours on my zero-hour contract. I have had many run-ins with this manager, but this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Deciding what to do with my life was tough and after I dropped out of university, I decided I wanted to join the Air Force. In the lead up to joining and throughout the application process, I worked for a health club as a lifeguard and barista in the coffee shop, bar. When I went for the interview for the job, I very clearly stated my intentions and that my priority was joining the Air Force. The interviewer, the pool manager, appreciated the honesty and gave me the job on a zero-hour contract to allow flexibility. A few weeks into the job, the pool manager asked if I wanted more hours as the bar manager was looking for more staff to fill some gaps. Slowly but surely, I started doing less and less lifeguard shifts and more bar shifts, this suited me more as I got to speak to the clients more and the hours were more friendly to my lifestyle. Here is where the problem started, as I neared the end of my application process, I had to attend a three-day course for selection and was given the dates of the course only two weeks prior to the course start date. As my manager wasn't in, I forwarded the course invite to him and said not to put me onto the shift rotor for that week, along with this, I left a note on his desk saying I had sent him an email. 
The next afternoon, I arrive for my evening shift and see the new rotor for the next month had been released, I had been put onto two morning shifts and one evening shift over my course dates. I immediately go and see the bar manager and explain I had sent him an email and I could not work that week, he told me that I would need to find cover if I didn't want the hours as the rotor was final. I agree to trying my best to find cover however if I couldn't, I was still going to the selection course, he agreed to this and I started work. During the next 10 days I found cover for the first morning shift and the one evening shift however that middle morning shift proved to be tough, I told the bar manager of the progress and stated I had not found cover for the one shift and after a long discussion, he stated that it was my responsibility to fulfill my hours, clearly had conveniently forgotten I was on a zero hour contract. I smiled at this and stated I completely agree with him there and went home. The pre-selection course starts and on the end of the first day, I receive a phone call from the bar manager asking who was covering my next morning shift, I replied to him how I had not found cover and that I had told him this already a number of times. I received a barrage down the phone about my attitude towards my job and how I will fail in life if I keep this attitude, no matter how much I tell him that I am over 100 miles away on a selection course and there was no chance of me being in work the next morning he still said, I expect you in work the next morning or don't bother coming back. I call my other manager and explain the conversation I just had and she very helpfully insinuated that I would be welcome back to the lifeguard team until I start my new career. She gave me lots of hours by the pool where I had a complete view of the hectic understaffed bar that I was supposed to be working behind and to add insult to injury, I phoned through to the bar to order a nice cool glass of water and watched the bar manager walk to poolside to drop it off to me. The next story is titled, You Want to See Me in the Office? Thanks for the hour long break. My manager at work is one of those people that doesn't like to do an awful lot and just barks orders at us. Even when you're in the middle of one of the jobs she's specifically asked you to do, she will shout you at the top of her voice, across the store to do something else now that she's changed her mind and the cycle continues. This ends up with everyone only being able to half finish about five different jobs. Anyway, tonight in the middle of asking me to do a third thing in the space of about 10 minutes whilst shouting me across the store as if I was some kind of dog, she told me she needed to see me in the office to complete our standard one-to-one -one meetings we have yearly. After telling me this, I had to go on the till to serve some customers so she said once I was off the till, meet her in the office. The thing is, once I got done she was off barking orders at some other poor soul on the other side of the shop and must have forgot about what she's previously told me, so I sat in that office for about an hour and a half without her or anybody else checking in on me. Thank the lord for YouTube and unlimited data. The next story is titled, $30 nap. Back in 2017, I had a job that required very specific, detailed accounts of various events. I won't fully explain the job, as it's irrelevant to the story. An incident happened, and I was required to do a report. I was very busy, so I rushed through and half-assed it. I was told to see my boss before I left, unknowingly to me, because he didn't like the report and was pissed off about the whole thing. However, he was busy and it was a bad day so I said hell with it and went home. A couple hours later my boss calls and said I needed to get back to work or I'd be fired. At the time, I was still trying to impress people and promote. So I went, and I got to his office, and he was complaining, and told me my report was crap. He said that I was going to rewrite it, and I was going to sit there and wait while he did all the accompanying paperwork in addition to my part. Not even two minutes into this ordeal, the head boss decides to show up to visit and make sure everyone is doing their stuff. Well, my boss takes off to kiss ass, he said not to go anywhere, and I said screw it, I'm on the clock, whatever. I kicked back, got comfortable. I put my head back, I'm taking a nap until he gets back. I wake up to the office door opening. I look at my watch, I'd been asleep two hours. We did the paperwork and my boss said, maybe waiting all this time will teach you a lesson. Yay, I learn a lesson. I learned they will pay me two hours of work to take a nap. The next story is titled, New Manager Believes She Knows a Job Better Than The One Who's Done It For Years. I used to work evening shift at Walmart in the paper, pets, chemicals area. One of the hardest hit areas since everyone who comes in usually needs at least one item from the area, yet I was doing this solo. They claimed it wasn't a two plus person job despite that obvious reasons why it was, yet I was originally hired on as the second person. 
Nonetheless, I got really good at the job, but being understaffed I definitely needed to be left to the job and allowed to do it in the ways I learned worked well, or else it won't be done. A few years in, the managers switched up areas they were in charge of, and my new manager decided I was doing the job wrong, despite completing it finitely. After a good bit of argument, I agreed to do everything exactly the way she claimed was the right way for one month and then we can re-meet to see how things went. Despite my best efforts to make her ways work, I didn't complete it even half the area a single night that month. When the manager overseeing the store each night would make their rounds to see everyone's progress and who might need so extra help to finish up, they would see my area half done at best and ask me what occurred that put me so far behind that night. And every time, I told them it was because my manager was not allowing me to do the job correctly, but I had to do it wrong for her own self-satisfaction. So if they want me to start doing it correctly again, they need her call it off and admit she was wrong, or wait till end of the month when I'll be going back to doing it my way again. She never did admit fault, but I did go back to doing my job correctly again when the month was over. I had a habit of not putting up with their bullcrap, so tended to not get good reviews at year end, so not like disobeying this manager had any further effect on me, and kept doing the job well despite this so they kept me hired regardless of their dislike of me. At least until I later got fired for not showing up to the back to unload trucks when a new manager that didn't know me called for employees for some areas I was not a part of. The next story is titled, well, as I don't learn anything in this class one could also just simply leave. Hell yeah, sure. Cast, me, student at a German school Mrs. S, my chemistry teacher other teacher, just randomly sitting in the back of the room. I had this stupid chemistry teacher, I'll just call her Mrs. S, she just finished studying and was in her two first years of teaching, where in Germany you're technically still in training, and parts of your work like your test grading get overseen by an experienced teacher. And she kept making the most basic mistakes you learn not to do in your first year of school chemistry, keep in mind that woman obviously studied chemistry. And as her tests were also graded by another teacher as she was still in training we'd get mistakes and less points in tests for stuff she simply teached us wrong. So I started just always correcting her mistakes in class until someone she burst out over a simple formal correction of the stuff she'd written to the board. Mrs. S, oh come on that's just a little formal thing. Don't be so exact. Me, yeah but we get less points in our tests because of you teaching that stuff wrong to us. Other teacher, also still in training, watching from the back, yeah, and also life just isn't always fair, so calm down. Me, what? Come on you also aren't even finished your training and never even said anything from back there, but now suddenly? And if we get bad marks because of stuff she teaches us wrong I ain't gonna just sit down and smile happily. Mrs. S, rhetorical, well if you think you aren't learning anything in this class why don't you just leave? Me, well okay. Asterisk packing my stuff. Let's say she absolutely wasn't prepared for me to actually do that and had no idea what to do. A minute after I left she kinda burst out of the room and ran after me, suddenly wanting to discuss my problem, nearly bursting out in tears. In the end we had an intense like 5 minute discussion and agreed on me getting my regular, good mark one had gotten throughout the year and me just not visiting her class the last weeks until summer break. Man, I really had a good time in my extra breaks. From then on I always had a feeling she was trying to get out of my way and d not get my attention when we passed in the halls. The next story is titled, Till a technically correct but meaningless answer affected the Battle of Jutland. Wishing to know whether the main German fleet had put to sea, he asked where the call sign of its commander, Admiral Scheer, was currently located. He was told, correctly, that it was in Wilhelmshaven. He then signaled to the British commanders that the German fleet had not yet left port. In fact it had already done so, as Room 40 knew, leaving Scheer's personal call sign behind, he used the call sign of his flagship when embarked. When the advance group of the British fleet ran unexpectedly early into the main German fleet, confidence in the Admiralty's intelligence was shattered, and the Battle of Jutland turned into a missed opportunity. There were other mistakes during the course of the battle, but the first one was probably the most influential. Apparently the commander was arrogant and unpopular so they answered his question but didn't provide the needed information. History alerting malicious compliance. The next story is titled, Bus Driver Hates Sodas. So, I'm a freshman in high school, I ride the bus home and my bus is the first bus in line to leave always. Typically you have about 30 minutes between school letting out and the buses leaving, but since mine was first it was more like 20 minutes. 
Freshman year is also when a cafe opened across the street from the school. If my friends and I ran, we could buy a soda at the cafe and drink it on the bus ride home. This was not against the rules and yes, I checked the handbook, I always do. I was also never the last person to board the bus, nor did I ever delay the departure of the bus. I also never spilled or dropped my soda. Now, my bus driver, who ill refer to as BD for bus driver, she was a delightful woman. ID had many negative encounters with her already so ID lost my respect for her, but I was a stickler for rules. BD began to get what I could only assume to be jealous of the fact that there was no rules against me going off campus after school was out to grab a soda for the bus. So one day as I'm boarding the bus with my daily soda, BD grabs me, yes I mean literally grabs my arm. BD, op. No more of this. I don't want you to go anywhere except straight to the bus after school because I don't want to have to wait for you. Me, it's not against the rules though. BD, it is now. It's against my rules. Straight here tomorrow. Me, okay Ms. BD. Goes to my seat. Tilda malicious compliance begins here Tilda. You see it was me and my friends who went to the cafe. And my friends had no issues with their bus drivers for getting sodas, and this was back when we all carried cash. So I just sent my friend across the seat to grab me a soda while I sat on my bus. I'm a stickler for rules, remember? I have them hand it to me through the window, and bam, I have my soda without having to cross the street to get it. This however did not fly with BD. As I'm getting off at my stop she grabs me again. BD, op. I said no more sodas on the bus. Me, no ma'am, you said I couldn't go anywhere but straight to the bus after school, so I had my friend bring it to me instead. BD, you know what I meant. No more sodas on the bus, understand? Me, yes ma'am. Day 3 is almost a complete repeat of day 2. But instead I have my friend bring me an iced tea. Because it is, technically, not a soda. I even took the lid off and showed her as I was getting off the bus but, this did not fly with my bus driver. I don't remember much of this interaction because 1. I was a teen and 2. I was getting bored of fighting with her. And it's a good thing too because that evening she called my mother and informed her of my antics. I didn't get in trouble because thankfully, mum saw my side of things and thought I was a smart ass but also funny, but we agreed I should stop before I got kicked off the bus. The next story is titled, That Time Teachers Made Me Do Physical Activities While I Was Sick. So this happened a few years ago during the second semester of my junior year of high school. On this particular morning, I was kind of sick, just not enough to warrant missing school over. Essentially I just had a pretty annoying cough, I was a little fatigued, and my throat was so sore could talking was impossible. When I got to class that morning, my two friends immediately realized what was up with me and knew that as much as it sucked, I'd be fine by the next day at most. On this particular morning, our teacher was out and another teacher in the building subbed for us. Since it was a Friday, he said that we should go outside and do some outdoor sports with another teacher and his class. I knew, and my two friends also knew that I really shouldn't be doing any on this morning, so when we got outside, we tried to get away from the crowd and take it easy while one of my two friends watched her color guard equipment. Eventually, our sub saw us and at this point was forcing us to join, especially me. At that point, all I could do was just point to my throat and let him know that I was sick this morning, even my friends protested for me and how I shouldn't be taking part in this. He only replied with, ah, you'll be fine. Do it for America. And I was forced to do a baton sport in the parking lot where we had to run from one end and back to hand the baton to the person behind you, I really don't know what it was called, I just know a lot of PEs do it. As the students in the other class were doing their thing, I decided to just do what I should have been doing and just take it easy, just go for a nice walk to the end of wherever I had to go and then a nice walk back to the crowd of students yelling at me. As I got closer the students kept yelling at me to hurry the hell up and how the other class had so many more students ahead of us. As much as the yelling sucked, I was sick and didn't want, nor should I have been doing this today, if they were going to get mad at anyone, it should be the teacher who forced a sick kid to run when he really shouldn't be. As I made it to the halfway point, the one who was next started running and snatched the baton from my hand and I walked back to my friends who were now trying to defend the color guard equipment that the other class kept trying to touch. After that whole ordeal, the other teacher was making teams for ultimate frisbee and I somehow ended up on his team. 
I again tried to protest and let them know that I was sick but my now annoyed sub repeated the whole, you'll be fine, and the other didn't listen to me and was trying to ask me my name, something that I clearly couldn't do. I used what little strength I had to try and tell him my name which he got wrong and just kept calling me, Brett without realizing that I clearly had a sore throat and couldn't talk. As the game began, I once again just walked back and forth as the other students were yelling at me to move it and the other teacher kept yelling, come on, Brett. A couple of those times I did come into contact with the frisbee. With it in my hand, the teacher was telling me, well Brett, really, to throw it long, to which I basically just tossed it to the ground and stood there. The game ended when it was close to the end of the period and lo and behold, my voice kind of came back after an hour and I still felt like crap. I really don't know if this story counts as a malicious compliance, but it's one that I find kind of funny now and just wanted to share. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.